Hi guys, it is a cloudy but warm summer day here in January in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is, we have now made it to the second day of January. That would be Sunday, January 2nd, 2022 here in the Point Lonesome Swamp and the Oasis of Freedom. And I have got a lot on my plate today, guys, so I might have to a little bit rush. The first Doomsday Sermon of 2022, uh, <clears throat> I had the pleasure of being introduced, well, you know, online uh, to this new Doomer chick that I was not aware of right here in the Oasis of Freedom in the great state of Florida. Uh, Sandy Shellis over at Environmental Coffee House interviewed this woman, and I highly advise you go over there and listen to it. Her name is Stacy Lee Sherwood. Stacy Lee Sherwood, and uh, she has a her own YouTube channel, which you need to check out and subscribe to, and an excellent website. So I'm just uh, introducing a new voice. We might, uh, well, I, I don't know if I'm, I'm dabbling around with starting up uh, the interviews. Maybe we'll have Stacy on our show at some point, but for today's <clears throat> Doomsday Sermon, we're going to get a, uh, a taste of her writing from her website, and we're going to talk about beef eating, and on just a couple of <clears throat> disclaimers before I go into this uh, sermon from Stacy Lee this morning. Uh, I, I don't know if Stacy Lee Sherman, uh, I'm 99.99% sure she does not eat beef. I do not know if Stacy Lee is a vegan or not. And I'm sure anyone who follows this channel knows that I do not eat beef or seafood, but I do eat pork and chicken and uh, venison. Uh, anyway, uh, I am not a vegan, but I do not eat beef or seafood. And I absolutely love beef and seafood. They're two of my favorite foods on the planet. Uh, <clears throat> the reason I do not eat beef or seafood has nothing to do with my personal health. Nothing to do with it. It is I studying the environmental footprint of beef and seafood. This is why I don't. This is my virtue signaling. All right. Uh, I do not eat beef or seafood because of the um, hit on the planet from the beef and the seafood industry which need to be put out of business. Anyway, uh, I could go on with this, but we're going to let the little dog go enjoy the squirrel eating industry. And uh, guys, I'm going to put the link to uh, Stacy's latest essay uh, here, and you can read the whole essay. We're just going to uh, get bits and pieces of it. Good Lord, because uh, I need to be somewhere shortly. Anyway, uh, this is her, this is Stacy Lee's <coughs> uh, essay written yesterday to kick off 2022 titled it's a bitter pill for beef eaters. Is their steak or burger worth the destruction of the planet? The answer to the question is no, it's not, which is why I don't eat beef. Okay, because the pleasure I get from eating beef, which is a great pleasure, is not worth the destruction of the planet, which is why I don't eat it. Okay. To answer the question, um, <clears throat> so anyway, she starts out a lot here uh, talking uh, about um, 
you know, human health, uh, as opposed to the to the uh, planet's health. So I'm going to skip down and uh, from the effects of eating beef on your own digestive system, and we're going to talk about the planet here. So we're going to start about a third of the way down. Take it away, Stacy Lee Sherman. What you eat does not just affect your own body and health. Food today is grown in some of the most unnatural and toxic ways. For those that do not eat organic produce, think of all the toxic pesticides sprayed and then magnify that by the thousands of non-organic farms. Now envision all the runoff from those farms going into the water you drink. <clears throat> now look at livestock waste. <clears throat> the U.S. has about 31 million cows and with each cow producing 65, 63 pounds of manure every day. It is easy to see why so much of our water is contaminated. This only represents waste from cows. It does not factor in manure from other livestock such as the pigs and chickens that I eat. Domestic pets such as Sancho Panza, wildlife or sewage leaks, pipeline spills, and pesticide spraying. All <coughs> of those combined contaminants make for a very toxic soup we all drink and bathe in. Ranchers, reporters, government agencies, and even industry scientists will chime in about management, containment, and cleanup of animal waste. The truth is very little is regulated or inspected on a regular basis and once something enters a waterway, removing it is all but impossible. Preventing contamination is key, but with that many cattle it is impossible to do. Most people do not realize how their eating habits contribute to huge destruction of public lands, grassland, and wildlife, which cause massive droughts and extinctions. As we expand animal agriculture, we have experienced unprecedented destruction of land and water. When cattle graze, they often pull up the plant by its roots and herds can leave an area looking like a dust bowl has passed through. Regeneration of natural resources like water and land can take a long time. Depending on the damage, many landscapes never recover from livestock grazing. Now add in all the methane those belching, farting cows add, making the greenhouse gas <clears throat> effect even worse. Factoring all of these negatives together, it seems illogical to continue with farming cattle when the damage, pollution, and disease they cause, they cause far outweighs any health benefits. Well, Stacy, I don't think cattle ranchers are in it for the health benefits of their product. Every state that raises cattle is facing a massive water, water quality crisis with little ability to manage it. We're going to have an interesting pop quiz on Collapse Chronicles. What state out of the 50 states by far produces more beef than any state. That right now, there are more beef cattle 
grazing uh, in what state than any of the 50 states. What do you think? Texas, Kansas, Colorado. How about Florida? Florida is the number one beef producing state in the country. And uh, anyone, uh, good Lord, and it's mostly down uh, down uh, around, you know, south of here in South Florida and the, around the Everglades and the Big Cypress Swamp. Like, I'm getting ready to head down to the Peace River, which is uh, the heartland of the Florida beef cattle industry. Uh, unimaginable uh, an amount of uh, beef cattle waste pouring into the Peace River, uh, the big cypress swamp, the Everglades, and you wonder why we have these algae blooms and red tide. But anyway, that was our pop quiz. I bet nobody knew that Florida produces more beef than any state in the Union. Okay, then she gives you a lot of links to go there. She, Stacy is real good about providing all of these links. Uh, anyway, then she starts talking about the human diet. But anyway, getting back to the planet, we're watching millions of our native wildlife being removed and killed to make room for cattle. The irony is that American consumption of beef has actually been decreasing over the years, though globally it is on the rise. We're now destroying our own public lands and water supply to provide beef for foreigners. This beef is going, uh, mostly my guess is to China uh, and Hong Kong. It's probably going to Asia is where uh, the, these <clears throat> beef cows right here from Florida, I have like 12 beef cows that you can probably hear in the background shitting directly into the water. Uh, anyway, uh, we are now destroying our own public lands and water supply to provide beef for foreigners. Exports of beef were expanded in trade agreements under the Trump administration, and that, in part, is what is driving the extermination of wildlife, such as horses, burros, bison, wolves, and elk on public land. Countless other species are being dis displaced as we destroy the delicate balance of natural ecosystem and prevent it from being able to balance itself out. And I am going to uh, break in here with her uh, mention of wild horses and burrows on our public lands out west. I am on the fence about this. Uh, Stacy Lee is a huge uh, fan of the wild horse and the wild burrow. Uh, I, as I say, I am on the fence, but what I, she has another uh, essay in here, I believe, and even the mainstream media was talking about this a few days ago, that it, it doesn't really matter where you are on the, you know, the wild horse and wild burrow, which were introduced by the, the, you know, the Spanish about 500 years ago. Uh, wherever you are on that, the, the, the point being in the mainstream media and what Stacey Lee will tell you is the reason they are removing the wild horses and burrows from uh, all of our public lands out west is that they're rounding them, them up, most of them heading off to the slaughterhouse, is to make room for more cattle and, to a lesser degree, sheep. 
okay, they need to get rid of the horses and the burrows, which compared to domestic cattle and sheep aren't nearly as bad. So if they were getting rid of the, uh, of the wild horses and burrows to let the land recover even from their damage, uh, I would be a lot more in support of it, but uh, understand what the drive to get wild horses and burrows off of public lands is the fewer the horses and burrows, the more that these private corporate welfare ranchers can move more cattle and sheep uh, onto our public lands so we can make more hamburgers to sell to people in Hong Kong. Anyway, then she has uh, a lot of links. Uh, here is click here to read how wild horses and burrows are being removed from public land to make room f for cattle. So she has the link to that story. Uh, okay, so and then she, she links you uh, over to several related stories. Billions of dollars for billions of burgers. The drive to keep the public misinformed about, ag about animal agriculture is funded by massive corporations with billions of dollars at their disposal selling a product they know is nothing like what they promote. There's an old expression, and I've never really understood this expression. There's an old expression, you cannot have your cake, or in this case, steak, and eat it too, which is still in use today because it rings true. Simply put, you cannot have two conflicting ideas at the same time and expect it to work out. Every year, world leaders get together to discuss the state of the planet. This year, the COP26 summit was another example of people wanting something without having to make any changes or sacrifices. The world cannot continue on the current unsustainable trajectory it is on. The rhetoric at this year's meeting will prove, well, did prove, once again, to be void of any substance. With the expansion of livestock, that, that alone is proof no one in power will lift a finger to make real lasting change. While the trendy expression climate change is bandied about by the Biden administration, the actions behind the words leave huge gaping holes where sustainable and achievable action should have been filled in. Yes, a true leader is one that leads by example, and when it comes to world leaders, we are in a short supply of those with integrity. When it comes to being top dog of the U.S., we have yet to be blessed with a leader who truly wants what is best for the country as a whole. Many believe the federal government is little more than a global lobby tool for industries looking to expand and dominate world markets. Our trade agreements serve this purpose. In 2019, the Trump administration, bowing to the pressures of the ranchers, made a huge deal with the, oh, the European Union. Okay, so that's where, obviously, where a lot of our uh, beef is. According to this one uh, report from CNBC, quote, over the course of the agreement, annual duty-free U.S. beef exports to the EU 
are expected to nearly triple to $420 million from $130 million, according to the Office of the U.S. Trade Representative, close quote. The beef trade deal is the main reason for more cattle on public lands and ultimately more native wildlife removed. Well, if you consider wild horses and burros native wildlife and killed to make room. One can expect a rise in meat-related diseases like heart disease, cancer, and hypertension. Of course, the already highly degraded water supply will continue to fall to third world country levels. The trade deal was a political move to appease ranchers, but it was not done for the good of the country or the world. A short-term gain versus a pivot to sustainable agriculture, once again, opportunity was lost. The trajectory of staying the course that got us into this mess in the first place while witnessing a dying planet with evaporating irreplaceable resources is a sign that change will not come from the top. It will only come from the public when the masses finally wake up to the truth and decide a little sacrifice is worth trying to save the planet. Now, I don't know Stacy very well, so I don't know if by making that sentence she believes, she believes that the masses will finally wake up uh, to truth uh, and decide a little sacrifice is worth trying to save the planet. I honestly do not, and as I say, I don't know Stacy well enough to know whether or not she believes one word of that statement. But Stacy, if you do believe one word of that statement, I'm going to respectfully disagree with you here. Uh, there is exactly zero evidence to support that notion. Zero evidence to support that notion. Every scintilla of evidence is to support the complete opposite conclusion. But anyway, this is Stacy's sermon, not mine. All right, at least she, she does separate wild horse advocates and wild, anyway. For the wild horse advocates or anyone trying to save wildlife, the expression, the expression actions speak louder than words comes to mind. Interestingly enough, none of the horse advocate nonprofits ever pose the idea to their supporters about a boycott of beef. Seems easy enough for anyone to do since it can be started today by using your purse to voice your opposition to an abhorrent policy. Every year, the thought of giving up beef as a protest is offered up to many advocacy groups. Almost immediately, many, of, many advocates descend on the idea, pointing out that only about 2% of livestock graze on public land and a boycott would not have much effect. Ironically, this is the exact same argument ranchers use when they justify being on public lands. The refusal to give up something even in the short term as a tool to help bring about change for a species one claims to want to protect is one of the reasons these groups fail. Instead, they support inane policies like toxic birth control, using hunting as a management of population, or hoping that legislation that won't be funded or enforced will somehow work this time. 
the act of doing the same thing over and over expecting a different result is the definition of failure, either by design or incompetence. If after reading all the drawbacks to consuming beef, the long list of human diseases to water pollution and eradicating na native wildlife, people still cling to beef as a healthy food, or in my case, a good tasting food, but will never be a genuine advocate for any animal. Best to move out of the way for the few who are as they try to clean up the mess by both self-serving industries and the pseudo nonprofits who help them. And then what Stacy does is uh, link you over to the uh, documentary Cowspiracy, which I think you can find on YouTube or on cowspiracy.com. It was, Cowspiracy was the, uh, Cowspiracy was the documentary that uh, convinced me to stop eating beef, uh, by the way. So if you are still eating beef, uh, go watch Cowspiracy. That was the end of me uh, eating uh, beef. And then if you're still eating seafood, go check out, is it Seaspiracy, I think, on Netflix, Seaspiracy, and uh, see if you're still wanting to eat seafood after that. But they haven't come out with Chickenspiracy yet, so uh, I'm going to wrap up this rant and uh, go enjoy some factory farmed chicken to uh, give me the protein energy to pack up my gas sucking truck and head down to the Peace River so uh, I can go camping in a field of cow pies. Uh, get out there and enjoy your fields of cow pies while you still can. Bye guys.